we're going to go over charging a typical air conditioning system. And first of all, we have to have the manufacturer's literature. And we need to know a couple of things like liquid pressure, uh, line temperatures, and what the required superheater subcooling is. And in this case, subcooling is 9 to 12 degrees. So to get started with, we're going to have to get some pressures. And we can see our low side pressure here is about 149 pounds. And high side is about 260 pounds. So we're going to go ahead and record those on the sheet, 150 and 260 respectively. And the next thing is to find our saturation temperatures. And you can see here we're left to interpolate what the reading really is because 150 is not on there. So we're somewhere between 50 and 55 degrees. So I'm going to guess about 54 in this case. And we'll go ahead and record that on the sheet. Next we're going to look at the high side pressure, which is at 260 pounds. And again, we have to go to our temperature pressure chart. So we'll go down here and take a look. And again, we're left to interpolate the readings between 254 and 274, somewhere between 85 and 90 degrees. And in this case, again, I'm going to guess about 87 degrees and get that recorded. Now we have to go ahead and uh, we've recorded our saturation temps. We need to get our line temperatures. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our thermometer. We're going to measure our suction line first. So we're using a fast acting thermometer, a Testo 905T2. You can see we're at 62.3 degrees. We're going to go ahead and record that and we're going to calculate our superheat. So 62 minus 54 is uh, about 8 degrees of superheat. So go ahead and record that. All right, now we need to go ahead and measure our subcooling. So we're going to put our thermometer on our liquid line. We have to give our thermometer a few seconds to stabilize. And it's not uncommon to have to wait two or three minutes for this to happen. Uh, we need to let the system stabilize and get a nice, uh, get a good reading. So here we're at 78.58, and we're stabilizing. We're about 79 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and record that. And 87 minus 79, and we're at 8 degrees of subcooling. We'll go ahead and record that on our sheet. Now we've got superheat and subcooling using the analog method. Now we're going to make our same measurement using the Testo 550. So again, we're at 9 to 12 degrees of subcooling. We're going to go ahead and install our temperature probes. We're going to clamp one on the suction line. We're going to clamp our second on the liquid line, respectively. The next thing we're going to do is just simply plug the temperature probes into the side of the meter. The key, they're, they're keyed, so you really can't make a mistake. All right, now that we have the temperature probes in, we're going to go ahead and we're going to zero the pressure sensors because it's the first time we've used the meter. So we're loosening up the hoses, closing the valves, I'm going to turn the meter on, and after the meter comes up, I'm going to zero the pressure sensor. I'm going to tighten the hoses back up. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the high and the low side connections. I'm going to turn on the backlight so it's a little easier to see. I'm going to hit the up arrow a couple of times. And you can see right now I have real-time superheat and subcooling. I'm running about 17 degrees of total superheat and 9 degrees of subcooling. It's pretty easy to scroll through the menus. I can see my evaporating temp and my condensing temp. I can push the up arrow again and look at the delta T or temperature difference between the two probes. Up again and I back to my superheat and subcooling. So you can see the Testo 550 makes the job a lot easier. The technician doesn't have to do the calculations, and the instru instrument does all of the readings in real time.